What's going on guys, it is I, some Joe Schmo here back with another Psych Reaction. And we are on episode number four, season one titled, Woman Seeking a Dead Husband, Smokers Okay, No Pets. <laughs> now, the, the, quite, quite literally the title of that episode just reminds me of nothing but just those terrible, what was it? Casual encounter post on Craigslist where it would be like, you were in the deli market. I was standing right behind you. You casually farted. We locked eyes and you proceeded to walk outside in embarrassment. I now want to marry you. Please message me. It's like stupid shit. It's like stupid shit like that where it's like, I swear, if we get a great just Craigslist reference in this episode, I'm, I'm, I'm there. I'm sold already. Uh, anyway, guys, if you're new to the channel, I do psych reactions here every Wednesday. Uh, I also do expanse reactions every uh, Thursday and Saturday. So feel free to like, subscribe, comment. Let me know what you're thinking. I am trying to keep an open eye in every episode so far. My ADHD kind of runs, runs this whole contraption up here. So sometimes I'm trying to look for uh, pineapples. Other times I'm just trying to focus in on what's happening in the episode. I figure just casually look for them and we'll see what happens. At this point, I've only seen one in these four episodes, so <laughs> I'm not doing a very bang up job. Anyway, guys, let's jump into this episode here now. Magic springy bounce up chair. Hey, Sean, smoothies are here. Pineapple, of course. Thanks. Hey, there, that, that counts, right? <laughs> that kind of counts. Uh. This is a bank robbery case. We don't need psychics for a bank robbery case. Bank robbery? Mm -hmm. I didn't read anything. All right, amping up the stakes a little bit here, even though we literally dealt with a murder last episode. Her husband's partners are getting out of jail. This is a routine warning that we issue when someone may potentially be in danger. I think this part will be leave. That's a good idea. Is that true? Do they really, like, if someone gets out of prison who's, if like someone's getting out of prison for like a bank robbery or any sort of crime, I guess in general, do they have to like bring people to the station when they're getting released to like give them a sort of, not pep talk, but is there like an itinerary that you have to <laughs> be given for like, so your husband's getting out of jail. Your husband's partners are being paroled today. I have reason to believe their first order of business is gonna to be to try and find that lost money. But the only person who knew where that money ended up was my husband. I know that. I'm Sean Spencer. I am the official head psychic here at the department. You don't have a title. <laughs> and there's serious doubt as to whether you're really even psychic. I saw the And now of course she's gonna be like, I want him here. He's on the case. But do you do readings? Jazz, we, we do it there all. There it is. Hook, line, right. sinker. I'm a bit of a Come on in, baby Rayleigh. Really. Girl read for me. Uh, really? Uh, here's a card. We're at the beachfront location. I could put my cell number on the back if you have any questions. Smooth criminal Gus. I love that we're getting more insight into like Gus and Sean's characters and how, like why they're friends and why they're like going through all this stuff. It's, you know, they kind of just seem similar, but yet different in so many different ways. What is she doing here? She's our first real client. That's hey, all right. Hard for the job. That's all you need. Expand on your clientele. Get your name out there. Sooner or later, capitalize, capitalize. I need you to get in contact with someone. Well, tracking people down is our specialty. Is the person out of the state? Country? He's dead. Yep. Ah. Mm -mm. And I assume that's why you need a psychic. Currently being eaten by worms. He's actually Jesus. entombed in a mausoleum. Gus, he's huh. ascended to the next dimension. It's fine. He got involved in a bank robbery. He was one of three, but the only one who didn't go to prison. Unfortunately, the reason he didn't get caught was that he drove his car down an embankment. What would you like me to ask, Raylene? Well, this is hard to say, but he was the one designated to bury the money. They were to all meet later and divide the cash. Only his partners were caught first. So why wait until now? His partners think that I know where he hid the money. Hmm, I've seen my fair share of heist movies. Is she working with them and now she wants to know a location or so? Hmm. The bank robbers? Yeah, a little worse for wear than the day I arrested them. You caught them? I was part of a team, but yeah, it was mostly me. That's a big deal. Would have been a big deal if I found the money and closed the case. It's funny, they don't look so mean. What do you mean, mean? Well, they look like repairmen. Big repairmen, but they don't look like killers. Oh my God, is he setting up a seance? You fool. <laughs> Ellen was the only one who talked to him. Ellen, yes, I feel that deeply. You didn't tell the police that, did you? No, I was afraid. He's my brother, I didn't want to turn him in. He's just using them to get information about it, or to go. You gotta admire. You gotta admire his ability to just 
pull information from people. The spirits are confused. They need more specific directions. Nearest Crawls Street. Uh, just past the park, we used to hike with Roger. Who's Roger? Okay. <gasps> I didn't break anything. Don't ruin it for everyone, <laughs> Gus. I'm not ruining anything. <laughs> Gus, you're ruining this experience for them. Come on. And let me make you a guarantee. There's absolutely no way there'll be any sort of contact with zombies. Oh. Yeah. You were saying? I blame it on the two convicts from the homie bank run. I'm sorry. I still don't understand why that means you need to see the entire case file. Julia, really, uh, we don't need to see the whole thing. No. No, just the cover page. Definitely the witness list. Well, you gotta see that. And the chief's okay with it. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> no? No. Aww. Almost. Hey, you. What a surprise. <laughs> you look different. Oh, she was from episode one, right? The, yeah. Oh, yes. Yes, I can feel her all right. She's, uh, she's over by the W's. I'm nervous. Don't be. I want you to relax. Breathe. Close your eyes. Why would she be in the W's? I don't know. I hear something. Ask me to. Paper. No. No, it's not paper. Yes, it's clearly paper. You have to come. What? You're telling me this guy can't just remember this information? He's got to write it all down? Come on. Use your photographic memory. <sighs> uh, I'm so sorry. I couldn't reach her. Why do I feel like the layout of that police station looks like an El Torito? The more I'm looking at, like, the background and the setup of it. You think the cousin has the money? Roger Blaine? That even sounds like an alias. He could have killed Wilcroft. Or it could have been the sister. Gus, they're all kind of creepy. The dead guy, the undertaker, the sister, Raylene. There's nothing creepy about Raylene. Mmm, a little too attached, huh, Gus? Mm. Okay, what is this thing you have with women in jeopardy? They have a name for this, you know. It's called the Stockholm Syndrome. No, it's not. <laughs> I was like, wait, knight in shining armor syndrome? She reminds me of somebody who was very important to me. Oh, my babysitter. Your babysitter? Oh, yes, my babysitter. man. Us. Mrs. Pilderman was in her late What a great song too to choose for him being like infatuated with this new client because it looks like her uh, his old babysitter. Oh Gus, please with the super smeller, you have to stop. Oh, dude, I can smell it too. I told you. Jeans and socks and underwear and a bounce sheet. Make jokes. How long do you think it takes to dry a load of clothes? Mm. 30 minutes? Somebody's here and not answering the door. Let's try the back. Whoa. You're not Roger. No, 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 you're, uh... Wasn't he dead? You're David Wilcroft. Yeah, it feels more and more like then the wife is making it up, right? Mm. Yeah. You lost the money. Trying to re-dig uh, it up or something, right? Um, it was, it was raining really hard for, for two whole days. It was the worst rainstorm in 30 years. You couldn't find it. I lost three and a half million dollars. Driving back, I nearly drove off the road. Was... I'm upset when I lose like five bucks. What, Gus? What's happening with what? you and this guy's wife? Are you, are you having feelings for this woman? Sean, stop it. I'm not hitting on your wife. No, he's not. But there's some serious crushing going on here, dude. I am not blind. Raylene is a very dynamic woman. Everybody's drawn to her. Look, guys, I, I know you want to turn me in, but you gotta understand, I'm close. I am so very close. I just want to return the money and get on with my life. Hmm? Hmm. We have to think this through. Yeah. If Raylene's gonna find out that I'm alive, at the very least, don't let it come from a stranger. Let it come from me. Unless she already knows! Ah! I'm calling my shot. See, because they're putting such a strong emphasis on Gus being like, she's in danger, she's in danger. We'll put these guys behind bars where they belong. Because I feel like with uh, with them tailing them so closely, like these guys aren't going to screw up anytime soon. They're setting it up. It's like, look over here, misdirection, baby, and then come in with a right hook, left, left, left jab, left. Uh, I don't, I don't fight. See something, Sean. Oh, I might be able to slide this chain off. You sure? Gus, I'm trying to concentrate. You might want to turn around. Uh -uh. What? Whoa. Well, hello. You guys parked around back, huh? Is that really necessary? Are we resisting? A window inspector? You always remember your first hostage situation. I believe it's like the first time he's actually been held up in this show. I'm a psychic. That's what I do. Perhaps you've read about me in the paper recently. 
I've been in jail four years. You don't have papers? I come bearing a message from a departed being. Uh, David Wilcroft wants you to know that he lost the money. Why are you telling us this? Uh, he, is, he is concerned that you're going to harm Rins, uh, Ra Rackle, Ra Mark, Raylene. Raylene? <laughs> oh, oh, that's funny. Can you make sure that we are not disturbed? Come on, reveal some juicy info. We got this. Can you prove you're a psychic? Here's the thing. It's not really a parlor trick. How many fingers? How many uh, uh, fingers? All right, man, time's up. Four. Two. Now, can we move on? Because three. For instance, why was it so funny? <laughs> three. Still three. And the guy with the gun is flipping me the bird. Man, you can see my fingers, can't no, you? No, no. We're going to try this one more time. Now, how many fingers? He's like, I'm right behind you. Dude, you need to stop picking three. He's like, is this guy for real? How does a wheel man miss a turn on a mountain road? Oh, I tell you what, he didn't miss that turn. I bet he just drove straight off. You wanna know why? Because he was trying to get away from his Damn <laughs> you good. I called her the Viper. Um, she's cold as hell. Man, we had to do whatever she am said. Am I right? No choice. I'm totally right on this one. Wife. Raylene? You know her? Well, she came to us. She wanted to contact David. Man, the last thing we would ever do is cross her. Man, all we wanted to do was get away from her. <laughs> Especially David. Man, she ran him around like he was an animal. Oh. Whatever she said. She could play anybody. I'm telling you, she's a very dangerous lady. Yeah, so she's got to know he's a... Uh... He's alive then, right? Raylene, this is not you all. Whoa! What, today's gun day? Sit! <laughs> today's gun day? That's two in one night, baby! I'm the only one who knows where the money is. Whoa! He doesn't know where the money is. Of course I know where the money is. Sean, I don't know what your strategy is, but you don't know where the money is. You have five seconds. It's in the crypt. The money's in the crypt? Well, David, oh, you certainly think about it, Raylene. That's clever. Right, pry it open. What? With a stanchion. Are those really that? Crips can't be that easily accessible, right? She's gonna figure out to lion. Eventually, but come on, it's gonna take a while to bust open a crypt. Wow. Wow. Not as long as yeah. I was hoping for. <laughs> yeah, same here. Son of a David. I can't believe this. <laughs> what are you gonna do, Raylene? Shoot all of us? None of you are armed. I can do whatever I want. Really now. Hey! Woo! The cavalry's here, baby! Well, that's where we come in, Chiefs. Some good work was done by Detective Lassiter. He was amazing. He figured out there was a connection to Roger Blaine, the cousin, who was involved with the faking of the death. Burnt body, no DNA. I never said that. No, but you thought it. That's how good you are, Lassie. You practically solved this entire case up here without uttering a single word. So we still have no idea where the money is? <laughs> I got nothing from him. <laughs> if he figures anything out, I'll be the first to know. Could you excuse us for a moment? <gasps> I know what you're doing. I'm giving you credit. You're trying to get me to admit you're psychic. You've already done that. No, I haven't. I will never, never, ever say those words. Which words? You know which words. No, oh, man, I lost my train of thought. Which words? <gasps> oh. That you think I'm a psychic. So when are you gonna tell him where the money is? I don't know where the money is. Sure you do. You're seeing dirt. Am I right? No. What am I gonna say now? I was convinced it was in the crypt too though. And if it's not, that's exactly why I'm not a detective. Sean, the guy's been digging for four years. We're gonna find it one afternoon, 90 minutes, tops. Did he realize that there is a J. Kalish and an L. Kalish trail? Dude, it's completely defunct. Check it out. Okay. I find it, I get credit. Like you would think, you, like if you knew where the location of something was, you'd be like, I should probably tell somebody this. That was episode uh, number four. And we are quickly on our way to our midpoint of this, uh, of Psych. I mean, at this point, what, how many episodes there's yeah, 15 episodes in season one, so it's not too bad. Uh, yeah, almost at that halfway point. Man, who would have thought seven or four weeks into this already, 
and gotta say, still maintaining, got some great head speed. I do love that each episode obviously has a different unique case, a different unique situation, uh, faking your deaths, you know, certain situations of being held hostage now with Gus and Sean. Uh, they're just constantly throwing different situations at me and I just, I love it, every moment of it. Uh, I do want, I'm still a little flimsy with some of the names. I think it's what, Juliet, Juliet, which is the uh, new female cop in the show. Uh, I love his kind of like flirtation with her going back. It seems like it's like unrequited love. Um, and I keep forgetting the lead detective's name, but I, I do love his like, his kind of, uh, what would you call it? Like a alpha versus alpha sort of mentality where, you know, the lead detective, lead detective feels so threatened by him. Maybe not even necessarily threatened, but just like has so much of an annoyance with Sean that he's just trying to find any situation to just discredit him. So the fact that Sean knows that and like keeps trying to not only inflate his ego by trying to give him credit, but also trying to convince him to say he's a psychic. It's, it's a great, everyone's got a great unique dynamic. And again, the more that Gus is involved with these, um, again, because when I first saw this show or when I first saw promos or even when it was on back in the day, I thought it was only about Sean. So I didn't really, I mean, obviously I saw Gus in the promos with him, but I didn't think he was gonna have such a, a, a dominant role in the show as he is. Um, but I do love that Gus is giving more, is providing more, and is, you know, has a lot more, I would say, of the funnier moments than Sean does because, you know, Gus has that dryness to him that just when he is funny and humorous, it comes out like in a way that just like totally takes you off guard. What was it like episode, uh, was it episode one where he's like, I will kill you. It's like moments like those that I'm just like, that's what it's all about. So yeah, been loving these episodes so far guys. And if you guys are too, then I appreciate you guys staying tuned in, but I'm still just some Joe Schmo sitting here reacting to some psych. Until next week, y'all, peace out.